Let me first keep the collector plate A at some positive accelerating potential with respect to the emitter plate, that is C. Now let's allow light of fixed frequency nu and a fixed intensity, let me call it I, to fall upon the emitter. Now we vary the positive potential of the collector plate gradually and measure the resulting photo current each time. Now as the positive potential of the collector increases, as you might have expected, more and more emitted electrons will reach the collector plate. Now let's plot our photo current against the collector plate potential. And what do you see? The photoelectric current increases with increase in accelerating or the positive potential. Now as you can see at a certain point, at some stage, for a certain positive potential of the collector plate, all the emitted electrons will be collected by the collector plate A and the photoelectric current becomes the maximum. Or in other words, we can say that the photo current saturates. If we increase the accelerating potential any further, the photo current does not increase. Now this maximum value of the photo current is what is known as the saturation current. Now just imagine what will happen if we instead apply a negative or a retarding potential to the collector plate with respect to the emitter plate. That is, we make it increasingly negative gradually. Well, when we reverse the polarity in this way, the electrons are repelled by the collector plate and only a few electrons, that is the most energetic ones, will still be able to reach the collector plate. So the photo current will decrease rapidly. At a certain negative potential of the collector plate, you will find that all the emitted electrons are repelled by the collector and no electron in effect reaches it. And so the photo current becomes zero. Now, if you look at the graph, this sharply defined critical value of the negative potential V0 of the collector plate is what is known as the cutoff or stopping potential.